Hello. Uh, welcome back by Alessandro. And, Abe. and uh, we are continuing our series of episodes of uh, the reasons that moved us to go to Open Render. Yeah. And in this uh, episode in particular, we want to show how um, comforting is in Open Render to make your own creation as they look part of the API. Mm -hmm. So how to enrich basically the ordinary the API of Open Render mm -hmm. without having you to change the source code yeah. or to do any crazy And this uh, is thing. thanks to Kotlin. And this is, yeah, thanks Kot to Kotlin. Kotlin has this thing called extension functions, mm -hmm. which allow you to add methods to f uh, objects or classes which are not mm -hmm. yours. Yeah, so if you're familiar with JavaScript, it's a bit, a bit like prototype yeah. in a certain sense. And when you add these methods or properties, whatever, they become naturally part of the of the class mm -hmm. so from for you they will act as they if they were there you know from from the start yeah okay um right so i'm going to start by creating a line segment mm -hmm. uh, between two points on the screen mm -hmm. um, for example i don't know 50 50 mm -hmm. and width minus 50 height mm -hmm. minus 50 um, and we can draw that line, mm -hmm. draw or line segment L. And I save this, so there we have this line. Mm -hmm. And what we would like to do is, for example, sample this line in, I don't know, 20 random place mm -hmm. places and draw circles. Mm. So basically, we would like to be able to say random and uh, an integer mm. and return a certain number of points. Run, so l dot or l dot random? Yeah, for instance. Yeah. You see, we, we, it doesn't exist. Yeah. Okay. So huh. how this is already something cool that we can sh see from the, this IDE. Mm -hmm. L dot random doesn't exist. Yeah. But I can hit Alt Enter, and I say create an extension function. And we say yes, please. Do it. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> and this is gonna be applied to line segment. segment. So what does this mean? So it means that. Um, the line segment is a class of the API. Mm -hmm. We are enriching it with a, a functionality mm -hmm. which is random. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I want to try it again mm -hmm. because, see, in our code here, we didn't show that it should return anything. Mm -hmm. But if we wanted to do that, uh, this would be vector two, for example. Mm -hmm. So instead of just calling L dot random, we want that when you call L dot random, mm -hmm. it returns a point, mm -hmm. a vector two. Mm -hmm. And now I do it the should same. Understand. Then and it does. And then it adds this return type already mm -hmm. there. Now, okay. now we don't need to specify it anymore. Mm -hmm. And now here we want to return mm -hmm. a point somewhere in this line. Segment. Exactly. So how can we now sample a point on this line? So essentially, we can sample a number from 0 to 1. Mm -hmm. We find the direction from one point to another, and we multiply. Or we can just call position t. Ah, we can call position t, <laughs> yes. Uh, be, OK, but because here you are using uh, a property of uh, line, line segment, segment yeah. that the, you can access the position at a given uh, value of the parameter mm -hmm. t, okay? Um, and this is super. I think even the default is, is 1, no? I think. 1.0. Yeah. So it's so short, like this. Uh, but I think it looks better with this. Mm -hmm. It's more clear. Mm -hmm. But basically, by adding this line to the program, mm -hmm. we have added a new method. Mm -hmm which calls returns a yeah. position in this, which is a line mm -hmm. segment, mm -hmm. and which position is a random number between 0 and 1. Correct. So now, from, our, from the point of view of, from our point of view, mm -hmm. this is a legit method of a, of a line segment yeah. that returns, returns a vector 2. Yeah. So let's create 10 of these points, mm -hmm. and let's you know, draw them. Points, I can do, for example, like mm -hmm. this. Uh, it dot uh, L dot random. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. So now points is ten random points mm -hmm. on the line, mm -hmm. and we could draw them like with I don't know fixed size circles, for example, mm -hmm. uh, circles as we did before. Mm -hmm. Points, ten 
And ah, this is this about our life and coding environment because we have added this function mm -hmm. outside of the block, so so then it forces me to restart. If I move this function inside the block, then it will not but complain. Here is the mm -hmm. uh, result. Yeah, the result. Yeah. And this uh, little extension, mm -hmm. as I want to stress again, it becomes syntactically part of the API. You can mm -hmm. use whenever yeah. you have a line segment. Yeah. Okay. See, so t in other words, we don't own line segment. Exactly. This, is, this is part of OpenR and Yeah. But we have added this method yeah. to that class. And it's very useful because imagine that you didn't have access to line segment. Mm -hmm. Imagine that you know it wasn't open source. Yeah. You cannot change the source code. Okay, mm -hmm. but in this way you are generally extending the um, the class, yeah. but without having to build a new class that wraps the or the other one, calls a super meter, then mm. of you know adds yeah. a meter. Okay? It can be very complicated if if you don't have this possibility. Yeah, if you don't have this possibility, it's complicated and uh, frustrating. Yeah. Um, while in open render, it's super super quick. Yeah. And super somehow. I mean, I like it because I don't have to differentiate the way I use this dot random function from, say, the way I use the dot length variables, mm -hmm. dot position, yeah. from my point of view of writing and expressing what I want to do in the code, they are exactly the same. Mm -hmm. They look the same. Yeah. And I really like this. Mm -hmm. Okay, On the right, with processing, there is no way we can do this. Okay. Uh, we, we have can still... to do it in an recreate the, a similar program or a similar result. Yeah, and we can, I mean, just to show the difference in expressiveness. Mm -hmm. um, so to draw first that line. Not, not in line, in draw, otherwise it will change all the time. Yeah, but it was just to draw the black, ah. the black line in the background. Okay. That okay. would be 50-50 okay. with minus 50 height, minus 50. Mm -hmm. So I, th uh, I keep hitting save. So now, first of all, you have ah. to save these variables. And th th this is looking ugly because I didn't call background. Yeah. Uh, what did you say? Um, first of all, now, we, if we want to implement something like this, mm -hmm. we have to say the origin and uh, we have to say the points. Oh, right, right, right. While in the, this ah. was done by us by the line segment. Yeah, yeah. So line segment is a structured type of data. Yeah. Uh, it's a data structure that contains mm. inside, okay? And, and for this, I'm going, I want to show another thing mm -hmm. which is important to us, mm -hmm. which is that uh, all that you can use, like vectors are first class citizens mm -hmm. in all drawing and even noise uh, functions in, mm -hmm. in OpenR and DR. They accept vectors everywhere. Yeah. yeah. Um, so in uh, p vector existing processing, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but you cannot use them, for example, to draw like this. No, hmm. because the line function is defined on a, a series of floats. Yeah. Okay. So now, as I was saying, we so have, have to, to keep do track something of similar. this. So yeah. p vector uh, start is a p vector. Oh, it's a new, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I haven't typed new in such a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is the starting point. A uh, new p vector uh, oh, with well, minus I can 50. just cut this. Yeah. And now, as you were mentioning before, when you, we draw the line, mm. we still have to access the x and y components. Yeah, of the you would have to do vector. this long way yeah. and dot x and dot y. Good, good. So we have <laughs> the see. Oh, what happened? Start and then I missed something. Start. Did I miss? 50-50 with, ah, I think, Wheat again, is out, outside uh, of yeah, the, at this yeah. point is not, okay, that's, that's funny, you I have, have to I have define, to define start them, and start and then inset up, yeah, yeah. so uh, this yeah. is not so convenient, Vector and you have to define and it outside to make it accessible also in draw, yeah, because it becomes a global variable, mm. or whatever you want to call, so now, yes. now we have the program, okay. So now, now we will, we want to sample points between start and end. Mm -hmm. 
Good. And what are we going to do? An uh, array list? Or yeah. what, what data type? <laughs> an array uh, list. Um, an array list, yeah. Uh, I don't even remember. Let me see. Array list. Of vector, of p vector. Yeah. But I don't know if you can already. No, can you, you do now? I think you can do bar, which might be a bit simpler. Yeah. Uh, last time I've used processing, you yeah. could not do bar. Yeah. Yeah. Let's so try. what am we trying to do? Uh, ah, a list. Yeah. Point is an array list oh. of p vector. Yeah. Uh, vector. And that's actually new, no? And has <laughs> to be initialized. Yeah. And has to be new initialized. Yeah. A lot of. Yeah. Var is not. Var not allowed here. Okay, then, then uh, I have to do the yeah. all this. Yes. Um, okay. Yeah. That's the point which is now empty, and we want to add ten of them. Mm -hmm. so, so for loop. Uh, for loop, for int i zero i less than ten i plus plus. Yes. So now, how do we do it? Uh, uh, what should we do? Add a new p vector. Well, we could create, we could yeah. create a b here yeah. before. So the way I would do it is the following: uh -huh. I would take the difference between the end and the start, mm -hmm. and then create a, va a random variable from a random number from zero to one, mm -hmm. and return the vector start mm. plus t times the that's difference. That's one way, but lerp. Lerp ah, lerp. ah, yeah, okay, because you can lerp, uh, you can lerp, lerp vectors. And a okay. float. But how do you know about lerp? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, more than 10 years doing processing. Yes, okay, good. Random one, I guess. Two. Wait, lerp, lerp. No? Uh, what, what do I lerp to? Yeah, lerp. Uh, where's the vector? No, P it's vector, a function. P vector, and then the float. So, yeah. end. And and random mm -hmm. zero comma one. Mm -hmm. So now we have a random point between the two. Okay, I think that's that's our list of points. Mm -hmm. And now we draw them. We have to do uh, now. We can use uh, we have to do a for loop. True. And now we can use one of these enhanced maybe for loop like uh, yeah. see, okay, for, for p dot p vector p vector. Yeah, p or maybe it works here with. I'm gonna try with var uh, okay. uh, in points. Okay. Does this work? I think so. Yeah. Why well, I can call it p. Yeah, okay. And then circle p dot x. P x p y. No five. No. No, no, to 20, double. Twenty. 20. <laughs> uh, but now it's gonna t flicker. Ah, no, no, it's not no, gonna flicker. No, because sorry. they're the same size. But what happened to the line? Yes. What happened to the line? And why are they all there at the end? Because you change it start. Where? You modified start. Really? Probably the lerp modified ah. start in place. Okay, so you have to use p vector dot lerp. Yeah. Uh, start and so you it creates a copy and it doesn't mm -hmm. modify mm -hmm. the. <laughs> good. good. Good that you noticed. I noticed because there is one thing that maybe can be useful to everybody that will use Open Render. Mm. Co or Kotlin, Kotlin. Mm, mm -hmm. Kotlin really likes immutability. Yeah. So it makes copies of things. Doesn't really like most of the time to change things in place. Well, I think al this also is very uh, very safe. Uh, no, and uh, specific to open R and R. In many, for example, the vectors are developed in such a way that ah right because they have pub they have a pri private uh, val instead of var. Mm. Yeah. But so, okay, so yeah. open render yeah. really likes immutability. Yeah. So you create new objects, yeah. you don't modify them in place. So this wouldn't have happened. <laughs> this, wouldn't have, this would have not happened, okay? So see here we see the similar programs. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, you, we couldn't, because we are not using Kotlin, we couldn't create this extension function. Not only that, we have to have this start and end that they don't tell me anything. Mm. In, in a month, when I look at start and end, yeah. I don't, you know... Uh, I have to remember things, yeah. but here I know that there is a line segment mm -hmm. attached to it, yeah. and it's clear, clearer what I want to do with it. Yeah. You see, the point is that I at the right, the start and end are uh, primeval, mm -hmm. and the line is, uh, uh, um, how to say, um, 
I have to say, um, the line is a consequence of it, mm -hmm. while on the left, line segment is the original, you know, mm -hmm. concept, yeah. and then it gets drawn. Yeah. It's a bit different. Yeah. Um, uh, and other things, this was also interesting that it forces us to make these mm -hmm. kind of global variables. Mm -hmm. Wh where they are not needed, actually. No, these are only, well, here we are using them to draw yeah. the line. Yeah. Uh, yeah. While here well, we are encapsulating yeah. inside the line yeah. segment. But here we construct the line. Exactly. So we don't need any more start no. and end. Hmm. So actually, this is interesting because a lot of objects uh, that are in uh, that you know encapsulate segments, like segments, circles, rectangles, are meant to keep track hmm. of things that you know you will use. Yeah. Like you know the the position of the corner, mm -hmm. the dimensions. Yeah. You don't have to define those variables because you will use them. Yeah. In, in this case, you you have to find them. Yeah. You have to be good at keep. Suppose hmm. I given it uh, the name A and B. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I'm saying? In yeah. this case, I don't have this problem yeah. because the line segment keeps inside mm -hmm. start and end. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Someone has made some, you know, reasonable uh, um, life decisions of, <laughs> of calling, you know, variables with, uh, 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 how to say, with a proper name mm -hmm. and shields, sh you know, shields me from, from making this decision. Yeah. Um, again, I'm not saying that you don't have to go through this. You should go through <laughs> this because, you know, like we knew how to do this, yeah. like without any external uh, tool. Mm -hmm. But by looking at it, now we appreciate it even more how expressive is the le left hand side. Mm -hmm. True. And uh, or to be honest, sometimes, you know, when you do in particular, when you do art with code, at least to me, I find that oscillation in uh, in the code I have to written make me in a bad mood. <laughs> like, you know, for instance, if I had to, to write other 10 lines of code yeah. to test an idea that mm. I don't even know if I would like, I mm -hmm. will not do it. Mm. But then I lose the opportunity of the surprise. Yeah. of say, You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and so that's why I find it over render very comfortable yeah. because it allows me to quickly express what I have in mind mm -hmm. and to test and experiment and without throw away things without caring so much. Yeah, exactly, work. exactly. Yeah. While in this case, it's like, do I really want to do that? What mm -hmm. if I don't like it? Mm -hmm. And and you can say, okay, it's five minutes more, ten minutes more, mm -hmm. but it's minutes. Yeah. Um, yeah. That to me, like mm -hmm. they put me off when I became better and more advanced user mm -hmm. because you know. When this algorithm was not known to me, mm -hmm. it was super cool to make it. <laughs> like yeah. it was super fun to yeah. engineer it. Yeah. But now that I know that it's repeating mm. and I know every line that I yeah. have to write, yeah. I'm bored of repeating that. Yeah. Like, you know, this is this is another thing which we haven't mentioned yet, but I believe it's much easier to reuse code yeah. in open R and yeah. Completely. Mm, because there's no really no way to do that easily. You you can create a library, yeah. but creating a processing library is not easy. Yeah, it's not easy. Yeah, you it's need not a easy template and you have yeah. to build it, and and otherwise the approach is copy paste. Yeah, and that's not. Then if you improve, if if you improve your function, you're not gonna go back to your twenty programs where you use this function yeah, exactly. to fix it Correct. again. Yeah, when whether in like in OpenRNDR you can have a, like a library of functions that you mm -hmm. reuse in different projects. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I find this very, very, very useful. Mm -hmm. um, and I hope this was a clear example somehow mm -hmm. of... Uh, and as, as, I, as I said at the beginning, we like code. So mm -hmm. we like the code on the left mm -hmm. because it's nice to read. Yeah. It's compact and it's elegant and it's easier. I mean... There was this thing about, um, I, I think I've said this this to you because probably I've said it to everybody. <laughs> um, there, there was a quote by Donald Knut, uh -huh. the, uh, you know, ideator of, the inventor of uh, LaTeX and was very influential programmer that I think he, he called the art of programming. Mm -hmm. And he has a quote that I always like. And uh, it's about, you know, saying, uh, we should change the paradigm paradigm on which programming is uh, built upon uh -huh. because for now programming is telling a machine mm -hmm. what i want to do yeah while programming should be 
telling another human mm -hmm. what I want the machine to do. Mm -hmm. And on the left, yeah. it's much clearer for me to tell you yeah. what I want to do yeah. with the machine. Mm -hmm. And I like, I like this. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. This is what I call the expressivity. I, I really like it. And this other human can be another human or can be yourself in a week? It can be in, yourself in, in a the week. future <laughs> completely. But yeah. I think that this idea that you know, we program for other humans yeah. to understand yeah. what the machine will do, yeah. it's something that, for instance, uh, makes it more related to computer science and to engineering, yeah. for yeah. instance. Sometimes we, oh, some people get caught on, oh, what's the fastest language? Or yeah. the, and of course, it's important. And in some cases, you do want maximum performance. But, mm -hmm. but it's also very important uh, how fast you are, Completely. how fast do you write yeah. code, yeah. how long it takes you to understand your own and code. Al and also what type of connections the language makes you make mm -hmm. between different objects. Yeah. Because you could have uh, everything written in assembly, mm -hmm. it's super, super fast, mm. but by just looking at it, maybe your brain, and we are talking about creative code, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Maybe your brain is not able to make those connections yeah. that you would do if the language were mm -hmm. more expressive. Yeah. So yeah, mm -hmm. that's, I, I, to me, that's one of the most important <laughs> reasons, this ability to deal with objects that are higher, high level enough that it feels like talking and yeah. it's easy to implement, mm. but also low level enough that I can do whatever yeah. I want. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay, so I think we can pause here yeah. and see you in the next episode. <laughs> see you. So.